Joining us now is Mike Davis, founder and president of the Article 3 Project and former Gorsuch clerk, and David Schoen, former Trump impeachment lawyer. Uh, David, let's start with you. Um, I think all of us predicted this would be a 9-0 decision, but we actually had these unhinged people who were once fairly well-respected legal minds trying to get people to believe that this was their electoral nirvana. Trump was going to be off the ballot in all these Super Tuesday states and a couple of others, and that he didn't even have to really run a campaign. How wild is that? It's, it's wild, but it's worse than that. It's a tremendous disservice. It's reckless. They're constitutionally tone deaf. And I never would have thought I'd say that about Professor Tribe, Judge Luddig. It's crazy. And when the oral arguments were going on and they saw the t way the tide was running, they said, well, the guy doing the argument is no good. Neither side did a particularly great job on the arguments. The court decided this case. And the court came together. You know, President Trump gave a speech today, which he said he hopes this will bring the country together. I would hope so, too, because it's a decision that fundamentally says, let's decide a presidential race at the ballot box. And that's the way it should be. Abe Lincoln said, people decide elections. And that's the way it should be. This case broke down in two parts, basically. They said Section 5 of 14th Amendment requires Congress to pass enabling legislation, and that hasn't happened. Well, Jamie Raskin already is talking about trying to pass a bill that. now. Too yeah, little, too late. I have late. that. Let me, anyway. let me play that yeah. for um, Mike, because this was quite something. The Supreme Court's not going to stop him, Mike. Watch. I am working with a number of my colleagues, including uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Eric Swalwell, to revive legislation that mm -hmm. we had to set up a process by which we could determine that someone uh, who committed insurrection is disqualified by Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. And the House of Representatives already impeached Donald Trump for participating in insurrection uh, by inciting it. Mike, whether it's trying to get rid of voter ID laws to protect the integrity of the vote, or trying to nullify the Supreme Court's decision. They just simply don't want a regular, verified, credible election at this point. Doesn't seem like it. Yeah, this is absolutely insane that these Democrats, after losing nine to nothing in the Supreme Court, they lost Justice Sotomayor. That's how bad their case was. And now they think that they're just going to ignore the Supreme Court and have House Democrats just disqualify President Trump, nothing screams democracy like uh, disregarding the will of American voters and disregarding a nine to nothing decision of the Supreme Court. The court also in its um, per curiam uh, decision today wrote that the disruption would be all the more acute and could nullify the votes of millions and change the election result if Section 3 enforcement were attempted after the nation has voted. Nothing in the Constitution requires that we endure such chaos arriving at any time or different times up to and perhaps beyond the inauguration. David, is this a warning to the states not to try anything, it seems like, after the election? I was actually heartened by the court went that far, by the fact that they went that far. I think it's very important that they did, and for another particular reason. I disagreed with the Trump team's argument that uh, it's, a, it's an accurate argument textually, but I didn't think they should have made it, that Section 3 really just bars one from holding office, not being on the ballot. We don't want to see after the election uh, an effort by Jamie Raskin or whoever else to remove President Trump from the ballot if he wins the election. Um, I think it'd be too little too late anyway, but uh, no, I, I think it was an important statement by the court. Now, Mike, I want to go back to the Merrick Garland uh, entreaty in that church over the weekend, where, again, he reiterated the Justice Department's opposition to state voter ID laws. And, and, and somewhere it was written, I can't remember, forgive me, uh, somewhere on one of the publications online, that it was very patronizing and, frankly, insulting to uh, many of the people in attendance who thought, wait a second, you think, is he think, you know, we're not intelligent enough to have a voter ID? I mean, I, yeah. it's just cynical. I mean, imagine how, I mean, just think about how racist that sounds, that the Attorney General of the United States goes into a black church and pretends like they don't have the wherewithal to get a voter ID in America like every other American. They are using black Americans here, and this is about 
the, their ability to rig elections and steal elections. And I think that these states, these Republican lawyers need to start filing lawsuits and getting injunctions right now on voter ID, on signature verification, on all mail ballots, on election observers, so we don't have the election rigged again like it was in 2020. Well, I think that the, we're focusing on 2024, and I think, and David, you can chime in on this, to me, it is essential that vote, the vote is wraps up within, at the latest, 24 hours after the polls close. This idea that we're not going to learn, perhaps, for two weeks until, uh, you know, until whenever they decide they're going to close <laughs> the big black box where all the votes are, that we're not going to learn uh, about who wins until days or maybe weeks after the election. How is that America? No, I think you're absolutely right. But, you know, the whole uh, landscape has changed. We do have OACAVA, the, um, the absentee ballots, the overseas ballots, servicemen and all that. But you're not really talking about that because that ge generally doesn't make a difference. You mean election integrity. You mean counting the ballots that have been cast in a timely fashion so we know who won an election. Or if it has to be uh, a recount, then there's going to be a recount. Yeah, we're not re we're not relitigating 2020, rigged, not rigged. We're focusing on 2024, and they have got to get this straight. Mike and David, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.